So if you or someone you know have been diagnosed with a kidney tumor, you likely came across a term called cryoablation. Cryoablation is now the recommended treatment by the American Urological Association for treatment of renal cancers that are less than three centimeters. If you never heard of it and have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry. In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know. We'll explain how it works, who is it for, and what can you expect during and after the procedure. First, let's talk a little bit about kidney tumors. Let's say you had a CT scan for abdominal pain or something else, or you had a screening MRI and you found a solid growth in your kidney. So about 70 to 80% of those end up being a small cancer. Although they are probably a cancer, don't worry, because these tumors tend to grow very slowly and they do not give any metastasis and they are still curable until they usually reach three centimeters. In general, even if they are a cancer, they tend to grow only a few millimeters every year. So if you find a small tumor in your kidney, even if it's a cancer and the tumor is small, let's say one, one and a half centimeters, it is an option to watch it for several months or even a few years because they grow very slowly. And again, like I said, they won't give metastasis until they are three centimeters. Indeed, if somebody is very old or have multiple medical problems, that is the preferred method is actually watching them. Obviously, if somebody is young, that has many, many years to live, or if the tumor is getting close to three centimeters, I think it needs to be treated. So now, what are the treatment options? In general, these tumors, when they are small, they can be treated just by simply destroying them with one of the ablation techniques or removing them. They are not tumors that respond very well to chemotherapy or medications, and you don't even need any systemic medications when they are small, since they are curable with the other options. For tumors that are less than three centimeters, cryoablation is the recommended treatment. And that's because it's less invasive and preserves the renal function. So it can be done even in patients that have chronic renal insufficiency. For tumors that are more than three centimeters, patients are usually better off by having them removed with surgery, either with a nephrectomy or preferably, if it's possible, by a partial nephrectomy where they remove only part of your kidney. It is a little bit more invasive, but it's also a great treatment option. So what is cryoablation then? Cryoablation is a minimally invasive procedure that uses extreme cold to destroy the cancer cells, basically to zap them. There are several types of ablation, including radiofrequency ablation, where you use electrical currents to generate heat to destroy the cancer cells, or microwave ablation, where you use microwave to do the same thing. We prefer cryoablation for kidney tumors because it's less painful than microwave ablation and can be done with minimal sedation. It's also more gentle in the residual kidney and we can monitor a lot better during the procedure. We can see the ablation zone, we can see the ice ball that is created around the tumor, so we can be very precise on how much tissue we're actually treating. Yeah, it's pretty cool. During the procedure, we can see that ice ball growing around the tumor and we can monitor. Usually we want to have some margin around. The only downside of the cryoablation when compared to other types of ablation is that it takes longer. It takes about 10 minutes per cycle to freeze the tumors and we usually do two cycles. And after each cycle, we have to wait about five to seven minutes to thaw the ice ball. Therefore, just to freeze the tumor, it will take at least 30 to 40 minutes. Microwave, on the other hand, takes about five minutes to do, but it can be more painful and can be more destructive to the tissue around it. And this is not a race, so we just want to make sure we kill the tumor with minimal damage to you. There is also a ton more data about cryoablation than any other type of ablation for kidney cancer. So like I mentioned before, the nice thing about ablation is we can target the tumor at the same time we spare the normal kidney tissue. So it can be done even in patients that have chronic kidney disease, even with a creatinine, let's say of three or four, I have done these procedures without any change in the renal function. You see, when you do surgery, even when you do a partial nephrectomy, you often have to remove part of the kidney tissue around it. So not only with surgery, 
it has a long recovery time, but also if you develop any time of kidney problem afterwards, it may become an issue. Of course, with the ablation, we also have to have some margin. We have to treat a little bit of normal tissue around the tumor, and we usually target at least five to 10 millimeters around it. But even if you're targeting a margin of one centimeter or 10 millimeters around the tumor, it's only a few mLs of normal kidney tissue that you are treating. And this has minimal effect in your kidney function. I bet you're also thinking to yourself, you told me that there is a 70-80% chance that this is a cancer. So how do I know if it's a cancer or not? Well, most of the time, at the same time we're doing the ablation procedure, we also do a biopsy. So we put a small needle into the mass and take a little sample to send to pathology. So we'll know. And why do we do that? Well, it's important to know for several reasons. One, you want to really know if you have a cancer or not. Because if you have a cancer, it makes you more likely to have other cancers. You also want to know for your family members and, 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 and other things. But it's also important because if it's a benign tumor, you probably need no follow-up after that. Whether if it's a cancer, we'll continue to monitor at least for a few years after the procedure. Now, some patients prefer to do biopsy ahead of the ablation and know if it's a cancer or not. And if it is a cancer, then do of the ablation. And that's also an option that we can discuss. How is the procedure done? As I explained to you, we usually use mild sedation, but in some patients we use general anesthesia depending on what your particular needs are. We then use precise imaging techniques, including CT scan or an ultrasound to insert this thin probe called a cryoprobe directly into the tumor and also to monitor the organs around it. Once in place, this special probe delivers a very cold gas called helium to freeze and kill the cancerous tissue. And this is a relatively slow process. As I explained to you, it takes about 10 minutes to create that ice ball. And we'll monitor how big the ice ball is throughout the entire procedure to make sure we're not injuring any of the organs around the tumor. In some situations, we may inject a saline solution mixed with anesthetic around the area that we're ablating that can displace any organs or nerves uh, away from the tumor to minimize complications and decrease pain. And this freezing process will cut off the blood supply to the tumor and destroy the cellular structure. And after a few freeze-thaw cycles, the cancer cells will die. So when is cryoablation recommended? So cryoablation is most commonly recommended for patients with the small renal tumors, typically less than three centimeters in size. And many studies show that cryoablation is as effective as surgery for small tumors. So even in healthy patients, this is the recommended treatment. Although the success rate is smaller for tumors greater than three centimeters in general, we prefer surgery for those. In patients who for some reason cannot tolerate surgery, we can do cryoablation for these tumors as well. But of course, every case is different and you should always discuss this in detail with your urologist and also your interventional radiologist. So let's talk about what happens during the procedure. So cryoablation is performed under light sedation or general anesthesia, depending on your needs. Overall, if you ever had a biopsy, it's very similar to a biopsy. In this case, we use CT scan and ultrasound images to insert the small cryoprobe using real-time imaging so we can precisely position this probe within the tumor without injuring any other organs. Most of the time we do a biopsy so we can collect some tissue from the tumor to be analyzed. And then once we have the cryoprobe in place, we deliver this freezing gas, creating the ice ball that destroys the cancer cells. And at that point, after I place the probe in, I'm just basically sitting there and watching the ice ball grow and making sure it doesn't affect any of the other structures. So usually if the placement of the probes and to do the biopsy usually takes me 10, 15 minutes or so, and then we spend another 30 to 45 minutes doing the freeze and thaw dance. 
Overall, it's a pretty mild procedure for the patient and most patients are able to go home the same day without any problems. It's a low stress, comfortable procedure with short recovery time compared to traditional surgical options. What can you expect after cryoablation? Well, recovery is usually quick and straightforward. You might experience some mild discomfort or soreness in the treatment site, but typically it resolves after a few days and you can go back to your normal activities. Over-the-counter pain medications like Tylenol or Advil are usually sufficient to manage the discomfort, but if you have more pain, you can let us know and we can prescribe you something stronger. Most patients are able to return to normal activities within a few days after the procedure, even going back to work. You can shower or take a bath immediately after the procedure, but we usually recommend about a week before you start doing like heavy exercise. Cryoablation is considered a very safe procedure, especially when performed by an experienced intervention radiologist. And complications like bleeding or injury to other organs are really rare these days. Even if the tumor is close to another organ, like the colon, for example, we can use something called a hydrodissection. I mentioned that before, but that's when we inject a bunch of normal saline mixed with some anesthetic around the tumor to create a barrier around any other organs or nerves. So we'll prevent any injury and decrease pain. This is a relatively new technique that made the procedure very safe. So what happens with the tumor after the ablation? Does it disappear? This is a very common and important question. What happens is when you freeze the tumor cells, they get destroyed. They fracture, they fall apart. And the components of that cell then are absorbed by the inflammatory system. And this gets people very excited about it because not only we're destroying tumor cells, but we're also helping your own immune system to fight the cancer. But this is really important too, because we need to understand that the imaging appearance is not gonna go away immediately. Indeed, if you repeat the scan the next day or even a few months later, you will likely look bigger than it was before because we treated the tumor with margins, right? So it's really important that somebody that understands the imaging and these procedures be looking at your follow-up images to make sure that these areas do not take any contrast, which means that the tumor is dead and does not have any blood flow. These areas should also not take any PET contrast. So if you have a PET scan, it should not be hot. So follow-up imaging is a crucial part of the process and we will schedule to get a CT scan or an MRI in six months or a year after the procedure to ensure the tumor has been effectively destroyed and check for any signs of recurrence. So how effective is cryoablation and what are the chances of cure? There is a lot of data about the success rate of the cryoablation and it's about 97% for tumors less than three centimeters. Either way, we'll follow the treatment for a few years to make sure there is no recurrence. And if there is recurrence, it can often be treated again successfully with ablation or worst case scenario with a surgical procedure. So is cryoablation covered by insurance? Yes, it is because it's a proven and effective way to treat kidney cancer. But it's always a good idea to confirm coverage with your insurance provider beforehand and my team will work on that with you. In summary, cryoablation is a minimally invasive, safe and effective treatment for small renal tumors and today is the recommended treatment option for renal cell cancers less than 3 cm. It offers the precision needed to target and destroy cancer cells while preserving healthy kidney tissue. So, if you think cryoablation might be the right option for you or somebody you know, talk to your urologist and your interventional radiologist about it. I hope this video has helped you better understand cryoablation and what to expect from this procedure. If you have more questions or want to learn more about it, feel free to reach out to our office.